Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Chaplet Monday, and happy Chaplet Monday to all of you from Cleo. Hi, Bernice and Denise. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Um, today, we will be celebrating a feast day and getting to know the saint for today, whose feast day is today, which is exciting. I love when they match up. So today's feast day is St. Boniface, for, who lived from 680 to, uh, when did he pass away? Seven, 754. So he lived 680 to 754. He is known as the Apostle to the Germans. Um, he is put up there as the equivalent almost of St. Paul in miles and kilometers that he traveled in his um, missionary uh, ministry. So evangelization wise, he is considered very much like St. Paul himself and uh, is credited with the conversion of most of the Germanic tribes and nations um, in the 600s and 700s. So St. Boniface is who we're going to get to know tonight. And for those of you that don't know this little fun fact, he is also um, credited with why we have a Christmas tree at Christmas. So we're going to talk about that near the end, but I thought that was a fun fact of trivia that we'll talk about tonight. So welcome everyone, good evening. Um, a little sad side note, it looks like the medals that I ordered for this week and next week, so for St. Boniface tonight and for the United Hearts next week, they have been lost in transition, tra lost in the mail, they made it all the way from France to Katy, Texas, and from the Katy, Texas Postal Center, they have not made it to my house, and they arrived there on May 26th, and it's now June 5th, the Feast of St. Boniface. Now, I think we'll just, if you don't mind, pray a couple of extra prayers to St. Anthony, that maybe they'll arrive here, maybe they ended up in someone else's box, and they'll make their way back here, that would be amazing. Um, so I had ordered, I had to special order those because they don't, uh, exist in silver form. Um, if, if you can, you can find them in sterling silver, but then it's like one metal for 45 to $75. So <laughs> we look for those ones that are at maximum a dollar fifty, And even then, man, we're, Sharon and I are so excited when we get the 50 cent silver medals. Um, silver plated, but you know, same difference. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about St. Boniface today, known as the Apostle to the Germans and known for, credited with uh, why, why Christians use a Christmas tree uh, at Christmas today. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second. So um, he was born in about 675 or 680 and he was given the name Winfred at birth. Uh, he's actually from England, so even though he's apostle to Germany, he was an Englishman. And at the age of five years old, his father had invited some Benedictine monks to their home, probably on their way in their own missions, uh, in their own missionary travels. And they spent some time with the family. And at five years old, little Winfred felt the calling to join as a missionary, to join the Benedictines. He was so inspired by them. He was so in awe of them. And his father said, absolutely not. You're only five years old. How can you possibly know what you um, would be doing with your future other than being a successful, you know, of my lineage? Um, <clears throat> so um, it, at that point, uh, I'm not laughing, haha. Ha. It's just interesting. Winfred became severely ill. Um, to where they were afraid for his life. Now his father took that illness as the hand of God, chastising the father for opposing his son's vocation. At that point, he lifted up his hands and he offered up Winfred for God's work, God's use, whatever that might be, um, and he did regain his health. So at the age of 13, he was allowed to um, be sent to, to be educated before he left, he received the religious habit of the Benedictines and ordained to the priesthood at 30 years old. He was so highly thought of by his superiors, he was entrusted with the important commission to the Archbishop of Canterbury. So 
he very quickly became well known, very trusted uh, in religious teachings. Um, and he was struggling so much with the idolatry of the day. So he was struggling with what he was witnessing in the clergy and with the lay people. Um, just a distance from the true relationship with Christ and true um, honor to the faith, the Catholic faith. In 716, he traveled to Rome to um, for a um, some time with Pope Gregory II. Uh, it was there that Pope Gregory II gave him the name Boniface and commissioned him to travel to Germany to spread Christianity. So this is when he gets his first calling as a missionary to Germany. So he did move there. He established monasteries. He converted many of the local population to Christianity. He preached to all of the tribes, inside cities, outside cities. Many of them, a majority of them were still pagan, so they had absolutely no Christian initiation, no Christian attachment. Um, it does say that he used a combination of persuasion and force. And when they use that word force, we're going to talk about that when we talk about the Christmas tree. So I'll bring that back up in just a second. In, 17, in 718, Boniface went back to Rome to get a blessing from the Pope for his new mission. He was proposing a new mission. And he was, again, allowed to stretch his preaching out to all of the outer um, Germanic tribes. So he wanted to reach even more of the non-Christians. Um, he needed this blessing because he knew he would be putting his life in danger. So the pagans had no problems executing Christians. In fact, they um, were still, they were still sacrificing um, children and people to their gods. And so they had no problem slaughtering Christians who would attempt to bring new faiths into their lands, which is why he needed the blessing from the Pope. He did receive that blessing, told to be safe, but continued to mission to all the out, outer tribes of, of the Germanic area. Um, he continued to found abbeys, monasteries, Catholic schools, um, Catholic churches, he established religious houses wherever he went and and his own faith was exploding the faith within these germanic tribes they were so in awe of him and they were so attracted to what he had to offer now as he was going through these areas he was also putting it on the clergy that was already there to get their acts together because that was part of the problem um Politically speaking, there were there was too much of the government entwined in ordinations, and so the priests that were there in those Germanic areas were not um, living religious lives. They weren't priests for the religion. They weren't priests for Catholic Christianity. They were priests for the government. And so um, Boniface was quick to call them out on that and quick to reestablish new ordinations that were actually legitimate. Now, of course, that angered a lot of people, not just the pagans, but also the government. But in 723, Pope Gregory gave him even more authority, consecrating him as bishop over all German tribes. So then they had to answer to him. So this was really a good um, tactic in the way of of the priests in Germany and the Germanic tribes had to be obedient to their superior and their superior was now Boniface um, as their bishop. Um, he was also creating new Christians that already were obedient to Rome and to the Pope. So that was also one thing that Boniface became known for in years after his passing was his dedication and loyalty to the Holy Father in Rome. And he was re-establishing that obedience wherever he went because that really was not happening in any of these Germanic tribes. Um, <clears throat> it would happen that he would travel in 732 to Frisia, which was, again, a very pagan region on the North Sea coast. He and about 55 companions were slaughtered there by the local inhabitants while preparing to baptize converts. 
Um, they had been preparing these converts for baptism and confirmation, and they were executed by the pagan inhabitants at the time. So Boniface, Boniface's death was considered a martyrdom, along with the 50 to 55 other people that were with him in this ministry. Um, the news of his death spread quickly um, throughout Europe and actually was um, part of a reason for many more conversions that followed after Boniface's death. So his death brought many more people to the faith as well. Um, his tomb is now still a popular pilgrimage site. He was canonized in 754, um, just 20 some years after his death. Um, and he has been venerated as a saint by the Catholic Church and also the Anglican Church in communion with the Catholic Church. And his feast date is today. June 5th. Now, I told you we would talk about this, and I'm very excited to talk about this, but how is Pope, or how is St. Boniface credited with the Christmas tree? So we know that he was uh, apostle to the Germans. He was a missionary to all the Germanic tribes, and throughout his travels, he became very familiar with one of their gods, probably with many of their gods, but one of their uh, most important gods was Thor. We know that name from popular movies today and, and from Greek and Roman traditions, but they also worshiped the god Thor. And they used to, the, um, one of the villages that he would um, end up entering to um, preach the gospel was called Geismer. And there the inhabitants would gather around a huge old oak tree known as the Thunder Oak, dedicated to the god Thor, and they would sacrifice a child right there at the tree to the pagan god. Boniface knew this needed to stop. And he wanted to convert the whole village by destroying the thunder oak, which the pagans had boasted that the god of Boniface would never be able to tear down. So he gathered a few of his companions. They traveled to Geismer together. His companions were fearful. Boniface continued to give them courage um, saying that we need to hold strong to our faith and the knowledge that we know that our God is all-powerful and all-knowing and the only God. So they, they reached the outskirts of the village on Christmas Eve. He steadied the nerves of his friends, and as they approached the pagan gathering, he said this, Here is the thunder oak, and here the cross of Christ shall break the hammer of the false god Thor. Boniface and his friends arrived at the time of the sacrifice, interrupting, stopping the sacrifice by their presence. In a show of great trust in God and born from a desire to enkindle the fire of Christ inside the hearts of the German pagans, Boniface grabbed an axe and chopped down the thunder oak of mighty Thor. The Germans were astounded. The holy bishop preached the gospel to the people right there. And he pointed to a small fir tree that was behind the now fallen oak tree. And he began to use the small fir tree for this new evangelization tool. Pointing to the little tree, he said, This little tree, a young child of the forest, this shall be your holy tree tonight. It is the wood of peace. It is the sign of an endless life, for its leaves are evergreen. See how it points upward toward heaven. Let this be called the tree of the Christ child. Gather around it, not in the wild wood, but in your own homes. And there it will shelter no deeds of blood, but loving gifts and rites of kindness. Awed by this destruction of their God's tree and Boniface's preaching, many Germans were baptized that night and a new tradition was born that night for the christmas tree so i love that story i did not know that story before digging into saint boniface i knew little anecdotes about how the christmas tree was taken from a pagan tradition and it was baptized i love how father Orin, our pastor says that that we baptize those beliefs we meet people where they're at and we find what they love and we find what they cherish and we attempt to baptize it 
you know, and bring it into our faith somewhat, you know. And I think that that story is beautiful. And that's why we have Christmas trees in our homes at Christmas. So God bless St. Boniface and that new tradition that he began with the Germanic tribes, probably inspired by the Holy Spirit in that very moment, seeing that baby fir tree behind the fallen giant oak tree and using it to teach about Jesus Christ and the Trinity, the true God. So awesome story, right? I, I thought that was very, very cool, very inspiring. So we can thank St. Boniface, whose feast day is today for the Christmas tree that we all love and cherish in the Christmas season. All right, so because we didn't have any medals of St. Boniface arrive, and I, I still am holding out that they might be on their way, who knows um, if they're not lost, uh, but we don't have a chaplet for St. Boniface. However, St. Boniface chaplet is a niner. So for those of you that have ever received a niner in the past, you can go grab any niner I happen to have a spare St. Athanasius. So yes, the medal is St. Athanasius. It's not St. Boniface, but that's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna translate this into the, the, the Niner of St. Boniface at this time. And we're going to lift up all of your intentions. So if you haven't put your intentions into the comments, make sure you do that now. And I will lift them all up in this moment as we enter the prayer portion of tonight's Chaplet Monday. And we'll continue to lift up prayers that those medals will somewhat, somehow arrive um, here and I can get those chaplets made. So I am going to lift up Bernice and Denise who lost their puppy this week. So I am going to lift y'all up because our fur babies, they are our babies. And so I lift y'all up for comfort and healing during this time. Mingo would like to pray for all those who suffer from anxiety and depression. And Minga's asking for healing for Lucy and Sissy and for the hurts in all of our hearts. Lenora would like to pray for her daughters, her grandchildren, and her sisters. May they walk without pain. Lenora would like to pray for all cancer victims and all survivors. Bernadette would like to lift up her daughter so that the test she had done comes out okay. Lenora would like to pray for all the working mothers that they have an easy summer with the children at home. That's a great intention, Lenora. Debbie would like to pray for healing for her new granddaughter. Frances would like, like to lift up healing for her nephew, Max. Um, he will be admitted at Methodist Hospital in the morning for internal bleeding. We pray for healing, comfort for the family. Bienvenida prays for healing for her daughter, Ruby, who has sciatica, and healing also for her granddaughter, Jayla, for her health issues. Praise God for the healing that we know will happen. And thank you for the prayers for my family. We just arrived back from Corpus, so thank you for those prayers of, of safe travels. Dolores would like to lift up all who are sick, especially the depressed and anxious who feel they have no one, that they know that they most importantly learn and believe that God is by their side. Prayers for her sister-in-law who's battling cancer, for her parents and brother-in-law in the hospital, and prayers to all those in need. Cleo would like to lift up one of her dearest friends whose mom passed away today. May she rest in peace. Sharon would like to pray for a successful eye surgery for Joe. Lucinda would like to lift up all people in need of prayer. May God hear our prayers. Tim would like to pray in Thanksgiving for the time that he's getting to spend with his 15 year old grandson, Riley. He's visiting them from Pennsylvania for a month. Praise God. Jane would like to lift up prayers for David Felkman, who's battling health issues, and pray for all those with chronic fatigue and lifting up all of our church family. Um, Sharon would like to pray for special intentions for Rick and herself and for the healing of her mom's issues. Cleo would like to pray for her family and friends, prayers for those that are traveling, prayers for those battling cancer, continuous protection prayers for all police officers. 
and Sharon, we lift up all those intentions that you gave to me earlier in the week when you thought you wouldn't be here, like for your son and his wife, I believe, uh, the ones that are traveling to the Holy Land. Um, <clears throat> so we pray for all of them, and we lift up all of your intentions. Oh, yes, your son, Ryan, and daughter-in-law, Nicole. Praise God. What a blessing. All right, so we are going to lift up some prayers now. Um, something unique about this Niner is that there are intentional prayers for each section, for each bead, or each um, set of three beads. There is an intention, and I love this. This was modified from a novena, but there were three sets of intentional prayers, and I love this. So I've added them before each of the sets. So it'll make it very specific and very intentional. I love that. So I lift up all of your intentions. We begin on the crucifix with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We begin with this prayer written by St. Boniface. Eternal God, the refuge and help of all your children, we praise you for all you have given us, for all you have done for us, for all that you are to us. In our weakness, you are strength. In our darkness, you are light. In our sorrow, you are comfort and peace. We cannot number your blessings. We cannot declare your love. For all your blessings, we bless you. May we live as in your presence and love the things that you love and serve you in our daily lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The opening prayer for the first set is for all missionaries. O Holy Apostle St. Boniface, you boldly preached the gospel in Germany and gave your life for the faith. Pray for all who proclaim the good news today, that they may have the courage and zeal of the Holy Spirit to bring many to Christ. And now we pray, Our Father, Hail Mary, and glory be. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The opening prayer for the second set is for courage and strength. St. Boniface, you faced opposition and danger while spreading the word of God. Help us to have your courage and your strength in the face of adversity and guide us on our journey to serve the Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The opening prayer for the third set is for conversion of hearts. St. Boniface, you converted many to the faith through your words and deeds. Pray for us that our own words and actions may bring others closer to Christ, to God, and that our hearts may be open to his will in all things. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We move to the medal. 
where we pray this closing prayer. O God, through the zeal of your martyr and bishop, blessed Boniface, you brought a great multitude of peoples to the knowledge of your name. Grant that we may enjoy the protection of him whose feast we celebrate. <clears throat> through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Boniface, pray for us. For those of you that haven't printed or downloaded the prayer sheet yet, there is another prayer on the back, an optional closing prayer. So we usually have our chaplet prayers and then we have another prayer. But right above it is a beautiful quote for courage. I love this. The church is like a great ship being pounded by the waves of life's different stresses. Our duty is not to abandon ship, but to keep her on course. And that is spoken from St. Boniface. This additional prayer is beautiful, and so if you do feel the calling to download this prayer sheet, it's a beautiful chaplet. I love it, and the additional prayer on the back is beautiful as well. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for getting to know St. Boniface and the history of the Christmas tree. God bless you all. I hope you have a beautiful week. We'll be back next week for the Chaplet of the United Hearts, and I'm very excited about this. The United Hearts of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph have been speaking to me for some time, and their feast days always align. So, the month of June, we know, is dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and so we always celebrate the Sacred Heart of Jesus inside of June, but the Immaculate Heart of Mary always follows as well. So, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the Feast of the Sacred Heart, will be on Friday the 16th, no, Thursday Oh my goodness, they're back to back. So the Thursday, I believe it's Thursday, is the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I believe Saturday is the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And then, this one's a newer devotion, and it's not on the church calendar yet. But the Chaste Heart of Joseph is always the Wednesday after the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So this devotion is probably only one or two hundred years old. It's a little bit younger than the Feast of the Sacred Heart and the Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But we I'm will not sure be. I understand. Siri doesn't understand why it's not a feast day yet, because <laughs> these things take time, Siri. So next week we will be back for the Chaplet of the United Hearts. Hopefully our medals will be in by then, and if not, maybe I can think of some kind of alternative way. I'll try to go to um, Hobby Lobby and make my own, maybe or something. So thank you all for joining us. We will be back next week at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time for Chaplet Monday, and next week will be the Chaplet of the United Hearts. So God bless you all, and as always, may you sleep with the angels and rise with the saints. God bless you all. Have a blessed night. See you next week.